The American Health Journal, bringing you the latest information on medicine, psychology, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Major medical advances are made each week, and each week the American Health Journal keeps you up to date. Hello and welcome to this edition of the American Health Journal. Hair loss in general affects about 35 million men and 21 million women just in the U.S. alone. 40% of men will have noticeable hair loss by the age of 35, and 65% of women will have noticeable hair loss by the time they're 60. We spoke with Dr. Sanusi Umar of Derm Hair Clinic, who explains the causes for hair loss. When we talk about hair loss, it refers to uh, male pattern baldness in men, or we call it pattern baldness to also cover uh, pattern baldness in women. That type of baldness is genetically determined. So if you are born with the genetic predisposition to lose hair or to have pattern baldness, then at some point in your life, usually in your early 20s or late teens, uh, you will notice that your hair is thinning. And what happens is your hair starts by gradually miniaturizing in volume. The size, the thickness of the hair starts shrinking. And um, as time goes on, it shrinks and disappears. We asked Dr. Umar about the common myth about inheriting hair loss from your mother's side of the family. Well, it is a myth uh, to think that um, balls runs in one side of the family and not the other. The popular myth is that it's on the mother's side. Uh, but nothing can be further from the truth. Um, baldness is an equal opportunity offender, and uh, in, in terms of the genetic tr uh, transmission has nothing to do with uh, what side of the father, paternal or maternal side. No one can predict from your family history how bald you will get. Dr. Umar explains pattern baldness. Pattern baldness, uh, you know, you get genetically uh, predisposed to it. And uh, what that predisposes you to is your hair follicles in the area of baldness um, become sensitive to a substance called DHT, dehydrotestosterone, uh, which is one of the breakdown products of your testosterone. Uh, so what happens is we all have a similar amount of DHT in our system and in our scalps. But in the balding person, or in the person that is predisposed to uh, pattern baldness, the hair that is in that area of thinness is particularly sensitive to the DHT. Even though the amount of DHT is normal, that hair just has receptors that makes it very sensitive, and it responds by just miniaturizing and disappearing from the skin. Dr. Umar tells us if stress can be a factor in hair loss. Uh, your hair sometimes is the first responder to your stressful situation in life. Uh, the hair can go into what we call telogen eff effluvium, which is when the hair just goes into resting phase. And uh, at that point, it's susceptible to being lost. Um, so that, for instance, might precipitate uh, a process that was going to happen anyway, but at a slower rate. Um, it could be nutritional, it could be medications, it could be anything that could accelerate something that is already there. Uh, there are other causes for hair loss. Um, for instance, in women, uh, in women, uh, hair loss is never straightforward. A good proportion of them that whose hair loss is caused by uh, secondary factors that can be treated. Thyroid disease, for instance, um, iron deficiency, um, anemia uh, because of the menstruation, uh, and many other things. In children, alopecia areata, which is an autoimmune uh, disease, is a very common cause of patchy baldness, and that is easily treatable. Um, and the list is very long for things that can cause baldness, but it just so happens that when we say baldness, we're really talking about pattern baldness. 